Hello everybody, Dushan here from How to Rhino, and today I want to show you something very special. Uh, it's a project called Rhino Inside, and uh, as you can see here on the page, it's an open source Rhino work in progress project that allows Rhino and Grasshopper to run inside other 64-bit uh, Windows applications such as Revit, AutoCAD, etc. This means that you can pretty much uh, have all the geometry from Revit into Rhino and Grasshopper in no time and also vice versa. This means that you can control, you can create parametric surfaces in Grasshopper and then you can import them in Revit easily without losing the actual BIM data. So the Rhino Insight plugin allows us to have the connection between Revit and Rhino so they talk with each other and you can use this workflow to make powerful designs, powerful parametric designs within Revit if you wish to do so. So let's get started. So the first thing here is this is the page. It's called rhino3d.com slash inside and here you can download uh, Rhino inside a uh, plugin for Revit and once you do that uh, let's jump into Revit and let's see uh, how this looks like. So this is the sample uh, the simple project that is uh, like a template project uh, within Revit and when you install the Rhino inside plugin you will get here on add-ins you will have this Rhino VIP um, uh, icon. When you click here uh, now the new Rhino window will open and it will actually run inside Revit. So let's see how this goes. Uh, uh, I forgot to mention that you need to have a Rhino 6 license in order to have this Rhino work in progress version. That's very important. And uh, please let me know in the comments below if you would like to see uh, more tutorials on Rhino inside because this will uh, tell me that you're interested in this topic. So for example, let's let's try here. Let's uh, this this is like the simple uh, the Revit geometry and now let's open here Rhino and Grasshopper so you can simply click here Rhino or uh, or you can or, or you can click uh, Grasshopper as well so I'm gonna click Grasshopper here it is and now it's running inside inside Revit and in addition to that I also want to open Rhino and I will uh, resize it to match my my window here so let me just quickly resize it something like this and I'm not gonna need this and all of these guys we can pretty much talk to have more space uh, and uh, now we can uh, get started so first thing that I want to do I want to show you how uh, we can reference some geometry from uh, from Revit so you can see here on top that we have some Revit, uh, Revit components and if I click here on the host I will get uh, the option when I right click set one Revit host. This means that I can now select for example this wall and voila that's the wall directly imported in Rhino. So now I can do this a couple of times just to show you that uh, let me just copy this guy a couple of times and for example let's try something else. Uh, let's try the roof and we have the roof and let's try something else. Let's try maybe the railing here. Uh, let me see if it's all unlocked. Okay, the railing is locked. Let's try, uh, for example, this wall. Here it is. Let's try. Uh, let's try maybe the this front part. There it is. And let's try maybe the other side. And uh, let me just orient here a bit. And there it is. So now we have this uh, geometry here. And if you're wondering, okay, but why would I need this? For example, in case you want to uh, to model something in Rhino, in addition to, to Revit, you can uh, convert that Rhino, that Revit geometry into Rhino using this uh, component. So now how you convert it? And you simply come here to element geometry. You take this guy and look, look, watch what happens. Now I'm gonna pretty much uh, duplicate this a couple of times and you, you will see that I will get a Rhino geometry uh, trans translated and this means that for example if I click the panel here let me show you this will say what it is so it says here Revit host element the wall so uh, and so forth so you can you have the the beam data from from Revit directly here in Grasshopper you can see what you're uh, working with and let's maybe try one more time uh, let's try this one and here it says timber clad and maybe we have the the roof also let's take the roof and here it says a metal panels roof. So it's remem remembering the data from 
from uh, from from Revit. So now uh, this this guy we can we can actually bake. It's close prep, and if you if you want to bake it, if you want to change it, you can just right click bake. Yeah, uh, you want to group it? Yes, and now you have this geometry directly here in Rhino, and you can play around with it uh, and do whatever you want with it. So let's go to the shade it, and here it is. Easy as that. Now, if you're wondering, okay, but what if I want to do something else? What if I want to create some uh, some kind of wall here directly in uh, Rhino and then transfer it into Revit? That's also possible. So let's create some kind of uh, curvy wall that otherwise would be very difficult to create in, in Revit. So I'm gonna just like uh, copy this multiple times and I'm gonna change it a little bit. I'm gonna maybe stretch it inward like this and maybe this guy I will stretch outward like this and then what we can do let's go to the top let's create one line here and one line here and let's trim it let's trim the rest of these guys and we can delete this delete and now if I go to perspective here uh, let's let's do the loft loft and we have but before doing loft let's record history so that we can change it if you don't like it so for example this is our wall and uh, if you have a record history on uh, you can play around with this so let me show you if you have this curve and if you want to move it maybe you will see that the wall will also uh, be moving so maybe let's bring this guy up something like this okay so you see the the, the result so now imagine that you want to maybe create a wall like this in Revit. Uh, first, let, let's give it some thickness, something like this. And we're gonna break the history, doesn't matter. And let's say that you want to import this in Revit. How do you do this? Uh, you simply go here and you say brep and you select your brep, set one brep. Now you have the brep. And if you want to, to have it in Revit, uh, if you can see here, it, it doesn't exist now in Revit, but if you want to use it, you simply need to go here to Geometry, Add Direct Shape by Geometry, and here uh, we already have the option to add the Geometry, and now this is added in Revit, so let's check this out. You see, there's our wall, inside, inside Revit, file. And it has the curvature just like the one that uh, that we have in uh, our file. So let's move on. What if we want to create something even even more interesting? For, for example, let's create, I'm gonna duplicate this here and I'm gonna create, let's say I'm gonna extract the surface and I, I want to uh, maybe scale this guy up. I'm gonna use scale 1D. Let's say something like this and I want to create some kind of division on this surface. So uh, let's try surface. Let's set it here, set one surface. And let's uh, maybe try to divide the surface. Let's use launch box. Uh, it's a great, uh, great tool to for a division of the panels. Let's say here 20 and let's say here 10. Surface 20, 10, 20 and 10, something like this. Okay, let's bring this maybe up. Uh, let's bring this to maybe 20 also. Okay, something like this. So this is... All right, so let's say something like this. So we have a lot of these guys, a lot of divisions, and we want to maybe create a randomized, a randomized extrusion of all of these surfaces. So how do we do this? Uh, simply let's go uh, first to the let's see how we can uh, we can divide this so let's use uh, this component here it's called random split list and uh, let's use a series here let's connect the series with the list and for this we need a list length uh, list length will give us uh, the number of the total amount of panels which is what we need to put here in the count of the series and uh, this is the result that uh, we're gonna get. Let's see. So we have uh, 1,315 of these guys, 
but this component will actually split it into halves so that's what we need and here we have this the the split which is uh 50 50 0 0.5 that's what we need and maybe let's use the slider for the randomness of the seed and uh, then we're gonna use a list item list item and uh by using list item here in the in the list and by using for example uh maybe this area you will see that now we'll get randomized selection of all of these surfaces if you use a b it will also be the opposite so if you change for example from five five to four or three you will see that the randomized direction will change so now we want to extrude these guys so let's uh let's use uh, let's use area component to get uh, the middle of, of these guys. Uh, let's use closest point, surface closest point. And here let's use, of course, the evaluate surface. That's what we need. And we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna use this surface. We're gonna use these centers. We're gonna have the surfaces also as these guys and UV points here so that we can find a normal. And let's do the extrusion. Let's extrude these panels uh, in the normal direction, uh, which will be, let's say, uh, let's say 150, for example. That's gonna be the distance. Uh, and we're gonna use the, the amplitude here. We need to know the vector. So that's why we're gonna use the normals with the vector and the amplitude and put here. And uh, the panels are going to be these guys. And I will see that I will get here the calculated uh, panels, but they are on the opposite direction. So we'll fix this by simply putting here negative and uh, doing this. And now they will reverse the direction. That's what we need. And maybe let's give a little bit of thickness to this wall. So uh, let's use, uh, let's use again, extrude. Let's use uh, X direction in this case and let's use maybe 300 I think that would be enough and now we have the uh, now we have the extrusion on the other side that's what we need and now imagine that you want to import this kind of wall in Rhino so I'm gonna merge these guys I'm gonna use the merge component and I'm gonna merge uh, I'm gonna merge this extrusion with this extrusion and the result is going to be one unified uh one unified preps but here i want to actually use uh maybe yeah let's use let's use flatten here and result will be close preps everywhere that's what we need and now uh, one last thing that we're gonna do to transfer it to Revit is going to be to use uh, the same component we used before, add direct shape by geometry. Let's connect, connect it here. Okay, so now it should be visible in Revit, but before before doing that, let's, uh, let's simply uh, move it a little bit inward. Let's uh, uncover this surface and let's bring it maybe here so that it's visible in our model. And uh, everything will be transferred on that side. And now let's check the result in Revit. And there you go. You see that we have our wall directly there imported in Revit. And uh, that's very cool to know that this uh, Rhino Inside plugin for Revit and integration with Grasshopper really can uh, benefit the workflow with uh, parametric modeling tools such as Grasshopper and uh, Revit. So you can directly model anything you want in uh, in uh, Grasshopper and have it uh, imported in Revit right away. This is just the beginning. This is just uh, one of the examples that I wanted to show you. Uh, please keep in mind that uh, you can also uh, transfer the families, you can transfer the categories, you can really do a lot more than just this. Uh, you can pretty much uh, control the whole B model directly there from Grasshopper if you wish to do so. So this is just one tutorial in the in the sequence. I wanted to give you the, the overall look of what it's possible here. And please let me know in the comments if this is something that you would be interested uh, to see in the future so that I know that we uh, create more content like this on this topic. If this is your first time here on the channel, 
please consider subscribing as we produce this kind of tutorials every week. And if you'd like to get the project files for this tutorial and all the other tutorials here on the channel, you can do so by supporting us on Patreon and get all the files there. And uh, I would like to give a special thanks to uh, Jung Suk, Arnold and Faisitan. They are our new Patreon supporters for this week. So that will be all for this year. Uh, I wish you guys happy new years and a lot of success in the new 2020. And we'll see you in the new year with new tutorials.